Hi there, my name is Dr. Stolz and um, I will give you a small introduction to biopsychology, uh, not a lecture but an introduction only. So let's begin now by looking into what biopsychology is. So biopsychology focuses on the relationship between brain and behavior. Biopsychologists study how biological processes interact with emotions, with our ability to learn, and various other mental processes. This is a subdiscipline of neuroscience, just for your information. If we have a look at the study of biological basis of behavior, um, we really need to remember that as a distinct psychological discipline, it began in 19th century with Hebb's organization of behavior in 1949. So we still consider this to be a seminal text for biopsychologists. And look at the nice little picture in the middle, which will show you a neuron with various uh, connections and firing of neuro neuron, um, neurons, uh, which really is very important for our memory, for our um, planning, for our learning, for generally our conceptual uh, existence. Uh, and a cell uh, fire together, and they will wire together, and that's how we create our memories. So, there are six divisions of biopsychology, um, physiological psychology, psychophysiology, which are not identical by any means, psychopharmacology, neuropsychology, cognitive neuroscience, and comparative psychology. I will go one by one in turn in a minute. So before discussing the divisions, we need to remember that the science is a method of answering questions by direct observation. So it's an empirical method. The difficulty here is the brain activity is not directly observable, so we cannot see it with our own eyes directly. Although today we are lucky to have a lot of um, dimensional, multidimensional imaging uh, pictures, etc. Um, however, it still doesn't mean that we can observe it directly. And then we have a question, how do we study something that we cannot observe? And I will try to answer this a bit later. So let's go to physiological psychology. Uh, we see a little laboratory animal up there. Rat, I think, and this tells us that subjects here are usually laboratory animals and uh, physiological psychologists do research on animals, not on humans. So if you are squeamish about this, this is not an area for you to go to research to. So this area is very strong on pure research. If we go down and look at the psychophysiology, which sounds similar but not quite, and the main difference here is not only how and what we look into, it is uh, the difference in subjects. Psychophysiology uses human subjects, uh, but all brain experiments are non-invasive, so there is no problem with that, so to speak. Um, we measure various things like brain activity with uh, little electrodes attached to our heads um, or muscle tension, eye movement, blood pressure, heart rate, etc. while giving certain stressful tasks or relaxing tasks to our subject. So for example, eye detectors um, have been uh, developed based on this research. Psychopharmacology, as its word says, uh, uses various pharmacologically based treatments um, to manipulate nervous system and observe what is happening with our behavior whilst using those. Um, so drug effects on our behavior which could be researched as a pure research or applied research. Um, and it is simply the question of preference and what we want to find out. Neuropsychology focuses on the biological uh, 
deficit or behavioral deficits which uh, are produced in humans by brain damage of some sort. Um, and since we cannot induce this uh, state in humans, uh, our main um, source of research is case studies. Uh, this is most applied section of biopsychology and we do various tests of brain damage patients, we have di diagnoses based on those patients, we uh, devise treatments and advise patients to various lifestyle changes and so on. Cognitive neuroscience, this is the newest division of biopsychology, very exciting because it collaborates between different researchers uh, as we need input from uh, linguistic specialists or computer science and so on. And we do often employ human subjects in such research through brain imaging techniques that are now very advanced and getting more advanced every day. So neuroscience focuses on neural basis of cognitive processes such as learning, memory, attention, and perception. Comparative psychology is the study of evolutionary and genetic factors in behavior. So often done in um, natural habitat, and this is a study between various species, but also within species placed in different environments. So why we react to certain events in different ways, so same, for example, in the same way, um, why uh, species who are different react differently to the same stimulus, for example, and so on and so forth. So now to come back to that first uh, question, how do scientists study the unobservable? This situation is similar to other sciences, such as uh, physics, which is an obvious and easy thing to picture, um, because we cannot see the gravity, for example, but we know that every single time we drop something, uh, it will fall on the ground. Maybe it takes a bit more time, depends on the weight of the uh, object, but it will happen anyway. So we know that gravity exists, and therefore we infer something from those experiments. Uh, very similarly, we do this in uh, investigation of our brain um, reactions um, to our behavior or how our behavior perhaps changes our brain chemistry in time. So to sum this up, biopsychology study biology of behavior in a variety of different ways and this diversity makes biopsychology an exciting and a challenging field to study. So we can integrate various researchers and do collaborations between uh, various scientists, and this is very exciting for all of us. So I hope you will join us in this course and to try to find uh, what most interests you. Thank you for listening. Bye.